Morning, all. All right, so news of the day video before hockey gets started for today. Uh, and the Boston Bruins making some news. So the Hampus Lindholm trade, uh, people may have felt that they overpaid. Well, what if it's not a rental? So Lindholm has signed an extension with the Boston Bruins for eight years. That's the max. Uh, $6.5 million is the cap hit. Uh, market value is apparently $6.25 million, if you're a big believer in market value. Um, there are some who believe that statistically it's hard to defend the deal. I will say this. He's the player that Boston wanted. They got him, and they've rewarded him with a long-term contract. So uh, for the Boston Bruins, they feel with this move, they've solidified their blue line, which they needed to do. They've needed a top four defenseman since since Tory Krug left. Uh, Krug, the offense was was great. Uh, the defense was sometimes spotty. With, with Lindholm, the offense may not be um, as obvious as it was with Krug. However, uh, he's capable defensively as well. I like Campus Lindholm a lot. Uh, always been a fan. I look forward to seeing what he's able to do in Boston. And uh, on Boston news as well, uh, David Krejci, who there was speculation about whether or not he might come over and join the Bruins once the playoffs were done in Europe. Uh, Don Sweeney has said that's not going to happen, that Krejci will be staying at home with his family. He has no interest in coming over and playing in the National Hockey League this year. So that's a blow to the Boston Maroons if they were thinking on some level Krejci might fix things. But again, at this point, Krejci's a lot older. Uh, the Boston Bruins, I think, need to find a more permanent uh, solution for their number two center issue. Uh, sadly, Studnika is hurt right now, too. So I, I, I guess we'll see how things work out for Boston. But uh, Bergeron's not traveling with them. Studnika's hurt. It, it, it Yeah, it, it's going to be interesting to see what they do between now and noon, my time tomorrow, when the trade deadline passes. Uh, Florida is also making a lot of news in that they've taken Aaron Ekblad, who was considered week to week, and they've just flat out put him on the on the long term injured reserve list. And so they're doing this because they're they're looking at a situation where Ekblad may very well miss the rest of the regular season, anyways. So they are bringing in uh, extra help, and they don't have to worry about the cap co implications of that. Uh, they've got Robert Haig, who has come in. Uh, from the Buffalo Sabres, apparently in exchange for a sixth round pick. I haven't seen which year that is or any of that. But again, you know, with Haig, uh, good depth defenseman and look for Florida to make these kinds of moves. And by putting Ekblad on LTIR, it frees them up to do it cap-wise. Again, we will be seeing multiple teams doing this this year. We'll likely see it again next year. Due to the cap being flat, uh, teams are, are looking for ways to, to make their roster better. And sometimes that involves more expensive players. And so for Florida, uh, Ekblad being on LTIR, while it's terrible for them because losing Ekblad hurts, it does free them up to uh, spend the the uh, salary cap money being saved somewhere else. So we'll see what else Florida does. Uh, also, apparently, Claude Giroux will be starting on the wing for the Florida Panthers. He can play on the wing. He can play at center. Uh, take it from me. Uh, I've, I've seen it. The interesting part of that is that um, I had Claude Giroux in the top, I think it was a top 20 centers, top 15 centers video one year, a year where that he'd played primarily on the wing. And then the following season, he was actually back at center for Philly, which told me that maybe Philly watched that video and went, you know what, he is good as a center. So yeah, Giroux will start out on the wing for Florida. I think Florida fans are going to be quite happy with what Giroux brings to the lineup. He can play anywhere in that top six i don't think it matters which forward position you put him at and it does give you a guy you can take a face off as the winger um you know your guy gets thrown out of the circle then Giroux goes in to take it doesn't necessarily get easier for the opposition so yeah uh, i think florida's doing a lot of the right things they're making it clear that they're all in they consider this to potentially be their year to finally not just get out of the first round which they haven't done since 96 but to you know potentially make a lot of noise in these playoffs and go quite a distance i do wish them the best with that um and a former florida panther will be making a debut today uh in philly uh owen tippett debuts today against the new york islanders i'll be interested to see how he does there uh obviously a former first round pick it is possible that the move to philadelphia you know gets that offense going that we haven't seen yet not consistently at the nhl level and so it'll be interesting to see how he does for the philadelphia flyers uh, but let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for watching for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.